While the uh, Expedition 40 station crew continues its work above Earth, another crew of astronauts are taking space exploration 62 feet below the sea. The NEMO 18 crew Japanese astronaut Aki Hoshide serving as NEMO 18 commander and his crew, NASA astronauts Mark Vandihai and Jeanette Epps and European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Pesquet are now submerged underwater for day five of its nine-day underwater mission at the Aquarius Habitat. Earlier today, I spoke with Mark Vandihai about the progress of his mission. So I know you're on day five of a nine-day mission there underwater. Uh, tell me how it's going. It is going great. We are having lots and lots of fun. Um, it's an incredible opportunity to live down here and just seeing this the planet from this perspective and working with some amazing people is I just couldn't ask for anything better. Great. Well, tell me from your personal perspective, how do you feel that that um, nine-day underwater mission is preparing you to eventually go into space? Actually, I think it, I'm, I'm shocked at how well it, it is an analog to a space flight. There's, we're living in a small uh, habitat where the outside atmosphere is not something we can breathe. There's uh, pressure differences between how outside and how we're normally used to living. Um, and the timeline actually has been great for me. I'm getting a lot of exposure to ha trying to keep ahead of the timeline and uh, uh, adjust to changes in the plan. So it's, it's really good for me. That's great. I, you mentioned the timeline. I guess that's very good training for uh, you know how the uh, astronauts aboard the space station are uh, working along that timeline. I've heard many times them kind of almost chasing that red line. So is it similar there? Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's a lot more. It's a much funner day when you're managing to always stay ahead of the timeline as opposed to those times when things go wrong and you have to call down and say, hey, I, I didn't get this done in time, or I'm missing the part to finish this. Um, so it, it is challenging sometimes, but uh, as time goes on, things get easier and easier to do, and uh, it just gets more and more fun. Just keep swimming. So yes, listen, exactly. <laughs> so listen, I know uh, yesterday, I believe, you were out for a, a simulated spacewalk. Is that correct? That's correct. So tell me about that. So Thomas Pesquet and I were out on a spacewalk for about three hours. Actually, of course, we were in the water. Um, we were simulating approaching an asteroid where we had already mounted a, a boom with a drill assembly, and we were working through the engineering challenges associated with the equipment development for one of those drills. So uh, we set up the drill, we started doing some sampling, um, and gave the engineers designing the equipment some feedback on uh, what we thought worked well and how we can operate it better. Yeah. Well, so tell me, how did that compare to your training when you were out here at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory? Was it was there anything different, any extra challenges that would be different? So in some ways, it was easier. Um, in the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, we're inside of a pressurized suit that's four pounds per square inch higher inside the suit than outside the suit. Here, with a diving helmet on and wearing a wetsuit, it was actually much easier to move around because there's no pressure differential between the outside and inside the wetsuit. Also, the gloves we we're using uh, here, they're normal diving gloves, so they're much. it's much easier to manipulate your fingers. Uh, you can also adjust your buoyancy yourself, much like when you're diving. So, in general, it was easier. It wasn't as high a resolution simulation. Sure. Uh, the visibility here yesterday was much worse, um, but we had diver support, um, just like we do in the MBL, and the equipment was similar. Communications was similar as well. Okay. And so, was it about the? Was it simulated much like a space walk as far as time-wise? Um, Yes, very much so, although in the MBL we'd spend five to six hours underwater. Um, we were only outside for about three hours. Okay. And tell me some about the tools that you were using. So there's a large uh, boom that starts off folded up. It, uh, you basically raise up one part and have a, another elbow sticking out. And then you mount a drill on the other end um, in an attempt to get about a two meter long sample from the asteroid. We've got, we drill in uh, one section. Once that's gone down far enough, we add another section, continue drilling. And then if all goes well, and 
and the drill doesn't stop, we add a third section and continue drilling. Once that's all done, you, you pull it out and you've got a core sample down the length of that uh, hollow drill bit. I understand you guys are also doing some other things, um, working with calm delays and also um, some human body studies. Can you tell me some of the other activities that you've been involved in? Yeah, we've been doing a lot of uh, studies on teamwork. This is a very confined space, much like what we would be in if we were traveling further away. Um, we're wearing sensors that help us uh, check our proximity to each other. Uh, we've got sensors that check our heart rate, light exposure, our activity levels. Um, even we've been doing uh, saliva samples to help understand what hormones we're, we're, we've got going on in our bodies, just to better understand the relationships uh, among ourselves. Also, lots and lots of surveys. Um, any more details on that question? Um, yeah, so, and then also you, you're talking about the teamwork and stuff. I guess you also have a um, similar, you have an international crew there with um, Aki Hoshide and also uh, Thomas Pesquet from the European Space Agency, much like what you would have on the space station, possibly e even future um, missions. So how is that going for you? I, it, honestly, it couldn't be going better. Um, we have been having so much fun. A lot of times we're laughing so hard we have a hard time breathing. Uh, <laughs> Aki's an incredibly good commander. Uh, he's got a, a great sense of when to make things very directive and say, okay, let's focus on this, get it done. At the same time, he's got a very goofy side where he's willing to laugh at himself and, uh, and you know, we're, we're just, yeah, it's, we're, and that, that's not always the case, but somehow things are meshing very well for us here. Sure. So listen, I've been following your mission along on Twitter, and I've noticed that you had posted something recently about taking a shower and looking out the window and seeing fish. Can you imagine what you might see when you're in space? Hopefully I wouldn't see any life outside <laughs> the window <laughs> unless I was hope unless that's something we were looking for. But uh, yeah, in fact, you can see this is, uh, today we've got a lot more fish outside than normal. Um, it's. It's like a swarm of mosquitoes, honestly. There's so much light outside the window right now. It's yeah. really amazing. Yeah, we've not I've noticed a lot of the, the, the photographs. There seems to always be a fish outside the window. And uh, what's next on tap for you? I'll come back to uh, Houston. And the next big event for me is uh, getting back in the NBL. And then immediately following that, uh, Orbit 2, Orbital, the orbital spacecraft that's currently docked to the space station is going to undock, so I'll work as a Capcom for that mission. Wonderful. Well, Mark, it was very uh, good talking with you today. Thanks for joining us, and uh, best of luck to you and the crew for the rest of this mission. Thanks a lot. It was really nice talking to you, too, Amika. Great. <laughs> Here's a diver. Okay.